One thing I love doing is catching mud crabs. I grew up on a creek when I was a kid and I used to catch them all the time. And over the years I've learned a few tricks and I'm gonna share with you now about how to catch a good feed of mud crabs. And hang around to the very end and I'll show you a little recipe that's so much easier than throwing them in water and it's so much nicer too, so check this out. Now catching crabs is really, really simple, but it all starts before you leave. You've got to get some good bait in. I like to use fish heads. When I clean my fish, I just take the heads off, throw them in the freezer, and when I go crabbing, I've got a heap of heads there I can use. Now the crab pots that I like to use, these are the more expensive ones, but you can use any crab pots you like. But what I like about these ones is they've got a metal frame in them here. So all I've got to do is with these fish heads, poke that straight through the eye of the fish and lock it in. And that fish head is sitting right in the middle of the crab pot. And that way when the crab's walking around the outside of the pot, it's not gonna be able to eat the fish. It has to climb into the pot to get it. And that's the most important thing about catching crabs. If your bait has broken free and it's leaning up against the side or it's dangling too loose and leans up against the side, the crab's not gonna climb in the pot. It's gonna sit on the outside and just pluck away at the fish. But these ones here, I really like, and using fish heads are great because they can't pull the fish head off that frame. They have to climb in and eat it. And even if one's in there eating it, another one will climb in and join him because it's not gonna break away. So that's the most important bit, everything you do at home. And now let's get out of the water and let's check some crabs. Pots have been out all night. The reason why I chose last night is, as you can see as I'm driving home here last night after putting the pots out, there was a big storm coming through. And that's what I really like. I like the big storms, a lot of water coming through during the night, and that seems to flush the crabs out a little bit. So a really good tip there, if you get a night where you've got a big storm brewing, get your pots out and check them the next morning when it's fine again. So I like to leave them overnight, or if I'm fishing all day somewhere, I'll drop them early in the morning and pick them up later on in the day. That gives me a full tide cycle. So it gives me a high tide, then a low tide, then it'll come high tide again. And it gets those crabs moving around. At some stage during that tide cycle, the crabs will move around a little bit and hopefully they'll find your pots. So you're also gonna notice I'm gonna head into the current to pick up the crab pot, just so I don't get any issues with picking up the rope and getting the rope caught around the outboard or anything like that. So let's go and check this out. So you can see here we've got we got two crabs we've got one that's definitely too small and one that's i think it's going to be too small we'll put him on the measurer anyway but uh i think he's going to be too small the bigger one is a male so in queensland you, you can only keep the males which we call the bucks and the jennies or the females have to go back um so we can measure him up but um i think he's going to go just under but that's okay we've got a few more pots to check yet so two out of the first one's not too bad the reason why I love fish heads so much is you can see the crabs have had a really, really good chew on the fleshy part of that fish head, but they can't break it away or they can't even pull little chunks off it, which the chunks will end up sitting around the outside of the fish pot or the crab pot, I should say, and the crabs will just sit around the outside plucking that off. So fish heads are a great bait, but heaps of people use chicken frames, uh, fish frames as well, as long as you tie them in well enough, but I think the fish heads are the best. And if you're gonna take a fish home to eat it, just keep your head thrown in the freezer. And I only use them once too, because I think fresh bait's, fresh bait's better. I did separate these two pots by quite a bit last night. And now they're sitting right next to each other. One's been dragged around, so it looks like a croc's grabbed hold of those, that pot. Mm -hmm. 
sometimes when the crocs grab them they tear your pots to pieces the problem i got with this one is the crabs got out well you get crocodiles um, attack the net as well even though that's not a big bite it was it could have been a croc too so that is probably a crab pot that might end up in the bin when i get home it's been chewed up so that's a good size mud crab they need to be 15 centimeters in queensland and that's across the widest part of the shell there and if you put your phone across the shell it sounds funny if you don't have a crab measurer um, an iphone is a bit over 15 centimeters it's about 18 or 20 centimeters so if it's as big as your phone and you ought to also notice down here the shape of the um, the bottom of the shell there I'm not I can't remember what exactly what that's called but I'll show you a picture here of a female and this is the males so you can tell the difference between the females and the males so we got ourselves a nice crab we also noticed that his claws are quite rounded off they're not sharp which means that he's going to be full of meat when they're sharp they're a really new shell and they're really quite empty but uh, he looks nice and full and he even feels nice and full because he's a really heavy crab so i'm going to take him back to my place i'm going to show you a little crab recipe that isn't your traditional throw it in water and boil it it's a little bit different but really nice so back home now i'm just going to clean this crab up and then i'm going to throw it on the barbecue and i'm just going to show you how to quickly make a really simple a really really simple uh, garlic mud crab but you can exchange the garlic for ginger or chili so you can do either either one and it's a really quick and easy recipe so let's get this guy cleaned up and i'll show you how to do it now i've given him a really good clean out i like to keep the lid which is what i call the lid or the shell or the top of him and I also like to keep the crab in one piece. A lot of people will break them all up, um, but for presentation wise, I keep him in one piece, but just get all his guts out. I just need to crack all the claws so that all the butter and everything that I've put on uh, in the alfoil is gonna go into that meat and really help cook it and give it some flavor. So I'm over here at Wardy and Sam's Barra Bar and Grill, worst vegetarian restaurant on Cape York. And we're just gonna melt some butter with some garlic, okay? So I've got a big spoon of just minced garlic. I've got about 200 grams, I suppose, of butter. There's a fair bit of butter in there. And I'm just gonna add some salt and pepper, but I want that garlic just to cook off in the butter a little bit, because it's just got a bit of a funny taste when you don't cook garlic off a little bit, I think. And our crab's pretty much gonna steam in the butter and the um, garlic and just all those flavors of the butter and garlic will come into the to the crab. So I'm gonna lay him down so I can pour all that garlic butter into his his cavity there. So it looks like I'm just putting the garlic butter all into the top part of the shell where the cap will go on, because I am. Because it's just gonna generate some steam to cook the rest of it. And then I can start wrapping just so I can make a bit of a um, bit of a pocket to trap all the steam. So I preheated that barbecue just for about 10 minutes or so before I started. And now that that's wrapped up, and remember that I've already melted and warmed up the butter and the garlic, so it's only gonna take about 10 minutes. If you put your butter and garlic on top cold, then give it about an extra two or three minutes just to get generate some heat up in it. And we'll be right to go in about 10 minutes or so. So this thing smells amazing. So like all barbecues, you can hear it sizzling and ticking away. Um, I've got a sweet potato in the jacket there that I'll keep on for a little bit longer, but we'll unwrap this bad boy and see what he's like. Oh, look at that. That just looks amazing. And the trick is to get him on the plate all in one piece. Now, we're looking forward to this. Garlic mud crab. Oh my god. Mm. Every time I do this, I wonder why I don't do this more often. This is just amazing. Cheers.